Hoshi uh, of Hashirangelancom and uh, for Virgibet Photographics uh, Sir, uh, my question is, ano pong impact po sa inyo uh, bilang journalist? Yung, uh, uh, meron ano yung bad at good na impact ng mga bloggers for journalists? Nakatulad po ninyo. And then, ang uh, next question ko, uh, kung na-handle niyo po yung mga kuryente yung balita, yung mga mali, na verify po, paano, na, po, paano po naman ninyo na-handle yung mga balita na pwede mag-cost ng panic sa public, especially ang business, magkailangan mag-post ba sa online? Uh, okay, there are two, there are two questions. Uh, let me let me do the second one first. Or maybe the first. Sorry, the first one was on verification, right? Uh, yeah, you panic, okay, and and you probably have a particular news event in mind. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, yung Yolanda, um, we, okay, yung role namin, we're very careful uh, to be nuanced and to convey the right amount of alarm. <laughs> Um, kasi you don't want to cause panic, but at the same time, if there's a serious danger approaching, you want to give sufficient warning. So it's really a very calibrated kind of response. No? Um, so Yolanda, you know, we were, everyone was criticized, the government, media, etc., for all kinds of things. Number one, we didn't give enough warning. Okay. Uh, well, we reviewed our, our coverage. Um, well, we didn't say that there was going to be a tsunami-like, uh, you know, a disaster. We, nobody said that, okay? Uh, we did say there's going to be a storm surge, but we didn't really explain the possible impact of the storm surge. Nobody did. Not even Pag-asa was able to do that. No? Um, so and then and then people were saying, well, we could have we could have said tsunami like, and then there was a there was some discussion of well that could have caused panic, diba? Um, but on the other hand, uh, it could have also driven people more people to seek safer ground. So it was, it was very, Yolanda was a, it was such a unique uh, event in our life. I mean, I think it's, it was the, the biggest disaster, uh, maybe in Philippine history. With, with that, it, was that, it was that big, it was that big. So it's hard, you know, it's so easy to criticize and, you know, maybe we all deserved it. Um, and then, you know, we're trying to learn from it, from it for future. So maybe next time, when we have a big anticipated storm surge, we're going to say it's going to be tsunami-like. Kasi yung isang criticism sa amin, yung, nung sinasabi yung magkakaroon ng storm surge, unang-una, English siya. Eh, ano ba yung Tagalog ng storm surge, di ba? Pangalawa, uh, hindi, nyo, hindi nyo pinaliwanan kung ano siya, kung ano yung posibleng mangyari. Well, <laughs> pa, I mean, we didn't know it was going to be like a tsunami, di ba? Nobody did. So, anyway, it's, um, you know, ano, uh, that's, it's, that's one way of uh, answering that, that question. Um, yung kuryente, okay. Kuryente, I mean, for those of you who don't know the jargon of the news media, um, Kuryente uh, is uh, being given the wrong information and then passing it on to the public. Being given uh, the wrong information and passing it on to the public. How do you prevent Kuryente? Well, through standards. Our standards, uh, we have standards for verification. Uh, we're constantly refining our standards, learning about experiences and improving our standards. And you know, this is much more important than before because that day, most of our information uh, was gathered by reporters and then processed pa by editors. Uh, and then much of the information gathered by reporters well, came from authorities, diba? These days, a lot of our information is coming from yung, yung purported witnesses. 
uh, uh, so to make sure that these purported witnesses actually witness, we have a series of questions that we ask them. Pag nagpapadala sila ng yung tinatawag na useful content sa amin. We have a protocol that we're still perfecting, but we have a series of questions to determine whether you know that person actually witnessed it, whether that person's photo was, was actually his or her photo, that kind of thing. So, but despite these standards, may nakakalusot pa rin na mali, na kuryente. Well, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Okay? Uh, and I'll just take that point to segue into a correction. Uh, someone just sent, handed me a message. Instagram is not owned by Google, it's owned by Facebook. So I will make a public apology for making, <laughs> for making that error. Yes, and uh, so there will be a retraction in my PowerPoint <laughs> in the next presentation. Um, sorry, I, I know you had another question that preceded the Corriente question. Okay, bloggers. Okay, the impact on bloggers? Bad and good. Ooh. You know what? Uh, I, I, I'm a former blogger. And I think I'm like a lot of people. You know, I, I blogged during blogging's heyday. Okay? And I'm not saying it's, you know, the thing with, yung heyday niya, okay, I started, what, 2003, 2004, I blogged for four or five years. I blogged until around 2009. And then what was the turning point? Well, 2009, I joined Facebook. <laughs> I opened the Facebook page. I think that was the death of a lot of blogs. Um, simply because there's not enough time. I love blogging. I love blogging. Even if I posted stuff that nobody read, I still, it was a great exercise in writing. It was a great exercise in publishing. And just, I just loved it, you know. I loved sharing it with my family, with my friends, writing about what I did, etc. Et it was like having a diary that you could that you share. And in Facebook, um, you know, problem on blogging, which Facebook quickly revealed was that it was very difficult to share. Diba? You'd have to send a link to your friends by email, that kind of thing. In Facebook, it was almost, it sharing is intuitive. And Facebook is a blogging platform. You can blog on Facebook. In my notes, sometimes I do that. Uh, but it's much more than that. You, you post, you share, you interact, there's lots of comments, etc., etc. So, Sorry, to add, I'm kind of digressing. To answer your question, whether it's been good or bad, it depends. Uh, you know, there are some really nasty blogs. There's some really useful blogs, some really edifying blogs. It, it's hard. To, it's like it's like um, generalizing about literature. Or I mean, blogging is a is a genre that still exists to a great extent. Uh, but I think it's golden. I mean, this is my personal opinion. It's golden age has passed. Uh, Simply because it was only because it's not the only game in town. Uh, during during that period, during its golden age, 2003, 2004, all the way up to you know to when Facebook just started exploding in the Philippines, and we're now one of the leading Facebook countries in the world. Uh, it was really one of the only ways for us to express ourselves on uh, you know in an extended way. You know, what happened Twitter, what happened Facebook, what happened Instagram, what happened nothing. It was really just blogging. Blogging, you know, it was it gave a, it gave us a lot of joy. It still gives a lot of you joy. Uh, it gave a, our readers a lot of joy. But now it's not. It's no longer the only game in town. You know? uh, it, it, it's just a. It's, it's a platform. It's a genre. You know? But you can't really. You don't know, um, you know, we have what we call what we used to call bloggers on our website. But I don't say They're they're like columnists. You know, so they're not really. Or essay writers, no, I can't say they're just they're blo you know blogger bloggers are it's kind of a fuzzy identity. Uh, I don't know, maybe this this summit has explored more authoritative definitions of what blogging is and what a blogger is. But the way I look at it, uh, it's hard to generalize about it because um, uh, it's kind of become fuzzy with Facebook and uh, social media. Certainly, the first time I appeared here, blogging was. I mean, para mas malinaw yung identity ng mga bloggers. Eh. Uh, kasi frankly, I, I have not stopped writing online. I just stopped writing my so-called blog, but I still write on my Facebook. You know, there are other things where I write. Now I'm writing a lot more on Instagram. Uh, it's hard to write anything on Twitter. 
So, yun. So, writing is writing, di ba? So, whether it's, you call it blocking or writing, writing online is it's still it's still very much alive and uh, will continue to grow along with the news business. And babago na yung goals and babago na yung formats. Thank you. 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 Thank you.